in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we have been called to a life that reflects the multifaceted power and wisdom and the grace of God. Remember, in Ephesians chapter 3, when you read verse 10, the Bible says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by you and me, the ecclesia, the church, the manifold, the word manifold, yes, multifaceted, multidimensional wisdom of God. When you back down to chapter 2 and verse 10, chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ. His workmanship, the tools that he uses to reveal himself, created in Christ unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. If this is true, then it must be made manifest in my life and it must, be, it must be made manifest in your life. So know it for a fact that the life that we have received is not a life of defeat, it's not a life of failure. Are we together now? Find a way of convincing yourself that I have, when I was delivered from the kingdom of darkness, like the Bible says, into his kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son, that translation had a destiny implication that you have not just been called from darkness to light, from foolishness to wisdom, from a life of misery and failure into a life of excellence, but that the Bible says that we should show forth the excellence of him that has called us from out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth is the Greek word doxazo. I mean the, 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 the word is doxazo, to show forth a display of the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have been called to a life of victory. I will never accept any teaching that seems to make me comfortable with a defeated life. I do not believe that, not now, not never. Are we together? I believe that when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, there was a destiny implication. Listen, we need to restore value to what the life of God carries because it looks for many people that the only hope, the only advantage that comes with the Zoe life they have received is life after death or life beyond death. No, no, no. Are we together now? A victorious life here and now culminating to a life of victory and excellence even after now and beyond this realm. This is the life you have received. Very, very important. Settle it tonight that I have been called into a victorious life. When I gave my life to Jesus, regardless what is happening now, listen, listen, Satan is a master of the sense realm. So whilst you are making these confessions of faith or while you are allowing this orientation to sink into you, Satan begins to use all the things that are around you to say you better not lie to yourself. Whilst you are talking now, there are bills, your children are going haywire, your life is scattered like the dear sister who shared her testimony, your marriage, is scattered and when you see all these things you come back to the realm of the flesh it's true it's true it's true but you must believe by the power of the Holy Ghost you must believe that this life you have received is an invincible life it's an indestructible life it's not the God kind of life It's God's very life it's not the kind it's his very life the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature. Are we together now? Yes. According as his divine power, he says, hath given us all things that partake unto life and godliness 
through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby hath he given us this exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust so you have to realize that god in his mind in his thinking at the back of his mind administering that life to you is upgrading you to a life upgrading you to his realm no wonder paul would teach us that we are seated in christ this is not just some pentecostal jamboree it's a spiritual reality that if you believe you now give it room to begin to manifest in your life don't say apostle it has not yet manifested it is the believing first then it begins to manifest there will never be a manifestation until there is a believing. Are we together now? The life of God in a believer has a destiny implication. I wrote here, the manifestation of the divine and victorious life. Watch this now. The manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends on our knowing the truth and engaging the truth. As truthful as it is that we've been given the victorious life in Christ, the manifestation of the divine and victorious life, the manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends on our knowing the truth and then it depends on our engaging the truth. Please do not forget this. That means this victory that is captured in this life that we have received will never find expression in your life and my life until we know the truth and then engage the truth that we know please say know the truth one more time shout it say know the truth then say engage the truth know the truth engage the truth listen if i spend the rest of my life as a believer in failure defeat are we together under the yoke of demons and curses and all kinds of things it does not change the fact that the life i received is a victorious life are we together now the diagnosis will be that i refuse to explore the knowledge of the truth or i refuse to obtain grace to engage the truth that i know it says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them now that you know these things saying i know i know does not produce results the first thing is you must eradicate ignorance by pursuing exact spiritual knowledge then when you find it you obtain grace because no man can do without the engracing of the spirit the value of his grace is to power that knowledge to see that you walk in keeping with the conditions that release the life that is captured in that knowledge do you understand me so far so many believers live defeated lives. We sing songs, we make confessions, we jump around, we pray and sweat for hours, but you cannot see the corresponding victory. It makes the believers experience an ugly side to the world. It makes people want to run away from God because the templates that we're selling to the world is a very irritating template. Dissipating energy in study, dissipating energy in prayer, being faithful in church activities with no corresponding result that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Sooner or later, you will be as frustrated as those who are watching you. Are we together? Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, it's an uncomfortable truth, but you have to admit it that if there is an aspect of your life that is not yet revealing the glory of God I have taught you here that the glory of God is connected to his patterns that when you walk in keeping with any divine patterns you now sustain the authorization to release that dimension of glory in your life there are many many believers that are not interested in finding consolations to their Christian experience by commanding victories and results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. The manifestation of the divine and victorious life depends not just on what God has said, it depends on your knowing the truth like the Bible says and then obtaining grace from God to consistently 
engage the truth that you know hallelujah i wrote something down here and i wanted to listen and then write i said the average believers challenge the average believers challenge is the kind and the quality of spiritual orientation he or she has been exposed to the average believers challenge lies in the kind and the quality of spiritual orientation he or she has been exposed to that means the limitation of my christian experience is not is not a limitation in terms of god's power or god's ability but oftentimes it is the limit of the spiritual orientation i have received the quality of the spiritual orientation that i have been exposed to i give you an instance if you were never taught look up please if you were never taught that God restores you will find out that your life will be bankrupt of restoration yet that possibility is in the dealings of God with men are we together if you are not taught that longevity is the heritage of the saints if you are not taught that God's destiny for you is to be above and not beneath if you are not taught that your life has been bought with a price that you live unto God that you are an ambassador pursuing the interest and the purposes of the kingdom you can live a very very a spiritually useless life just looking for what to eat, looking for how to make ends meet, as we call it, and never doing anything that is, of et that is eternal in context, simply because you are not taught. So your spiritual orientation matters. That means the body of information that you receive from church, from we men and women of God. It is the reason why you see me challenge men and women of God that we must upgrade our understanding because our limitation is what we impart to those who sit before us. That means there will be a widespread, if I decide to be limited in an area and I'm too proud or too lazy, are we together to contend for light in that area i will program my limitation upon you as you listen to me every day you will find out that my lopsidedness becomes imparted to you so that the areas have refused to receive results because i am teaching you from the lens of my limitation and this is what we have all across the body of christ respectfully speaking so there is a widespread communication of truth that is laced with a lot of gaps and limitations and sometimes we teach it with such pride there is almost no hope for correction i know this this is how it works yet the result is not showing and members shout amen to that error they shout amen to that limitation and they leave the church and execute that error as exact as they were taught only to program another cycle of pain may god open your eyes in the name of jesus christ the assignment of the teaching priest is to bring you light the truth of scripture line upon line precept upon precept that empowers you you know how to move from victory to victory are we together second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 i believe it says now thanks be to god give us that scripture which always causes us to triumph in christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph first corinthians 15 57 it says now thanks be to god which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. These are scriptures that attest to the fact that our lives should not be mediocre, defeated lives. And there is no theology under any guise that should endorse the believers living in defeat and victory. No. Or, or defeat and, and mediocrity and failure. We have been called to a life of victory. It's as simple as that challenges may come it is not unusual my bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but it leaves us with an assurance that the lord delivered him from them how many all are we together now what we largely have as believers is what i call isolated truths isolated truths. so we have pockets and pieces of the truth they are not lies, 
but they are isolated truths and you see when you know how God works please let me your attention when you know how God works you would know immediately that finding a truth or a piece of the truth will not automatically culminate to victory are we together now so we have pieces of truths and those truths are valid so we keep having little results here and there but they are not coordinated to produce the kind of victory that compels the world to see the glory of God in our lives because they are pieces and pockets of truth let me show you a scripture a scripture that really really blessed me Romans 1 20 Romans 1 20 let's read together if you can see it projected ready read for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are... Let me break this down for you so you understand what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying, even if you are not spiritual, God was so determined to help you understand his ways that he programmed a parallel of the realm of the spirit in your environment. That means everything that works physically is a parallel of how the realm of the spirit works. So that if you claim you do not have the intelligence or the, the, the stamina to access the realm of the spirit, you can use biology, you can use nature, you will still learn of the ways of God. Are you getting that scripture there? It says so that we are without excuse. His, 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 his insistence that we understand his ways. He made sure that he created a parallel. For instance, if you do not understand the Trinity, how they function, you can look at a tree that the Bible says you are. You see the root, you see the vine, you see the branches with the fruit. Are we together now? Everything that holds power and force on earth has a trinity expression water ice liquid vapor time yesterday today tomorrow that you can use nature you can use biology you can use sociology and you will still learn the ways of god with the accuracy of someone who access the prophetic that so that whether you choose to be serious or not, as far as knowing the ways of God is concerned, you should not be with any excuse. This is very powerful. So, if you are in doubt as to how God's victory systems work, how his dominion system work, all you need to do is look at your world and look at the things that he created because he used the same formula in creating them. And when I was studying for this, I was so, I was so blessed because it ministered to me. It just showed me immediately where the believer's problem is. The believer's problem is a problem of isolated truth. That the truth has not been able to come together systemically to produce wholesome victory and let me your attention for a few minutes i want us to explore the human body as a case study since the bible tells us that we can use nature and the things that god has created physically to understand his ways there are many many truths that are powerful and many of us have received them but in isolation, they will not produce wholesome victory. I give you an example, confession. Confession. The average Pentecostal charismatic of the spoken word, you see. And many of us have been trained and mentored to not play with our speakings. And I have taught you that. And that is a fact. But if confession is the only truth you have and you know, you are going to be disappointed because it was supposed to be part of a larger system that produces the wholesome victory of the believer. Are we together now? Isolating confession as the only parameter required for victory will eventually end you in frustration. Another example, warfare and deliverance. Africa understands this very powerfully. And if you're in this ministry, you understand this very powerfully. I believe in warfare and deliverance, but not as the single and only key that brings wholesome victory for the believer. That would be error. Are we together now? That warfare and deliver, de deliverance has its place and its jurisdiction 
it becomes profitable only when it is connected to a larger body of truths please understand what i'm teaching you tonight isolating it and just believing or teaching that deliverance and warfare even prayer is the one and only key no you are going to be programming a lot of pain that will be waiting for you in the future is someone learning number three for instance don't write just listen it's hard work i'm giving you a lot of isolated truths as a case study hard work there are people who do not believe in prayer do not believe in demons for instance do not believe in whatever it is they just believe in hard work work hard and then we use stories like there are great people bill gates and jeff bezos and all these guys they work themselves out and look what they've been able to do hard work is the key you are right but if in isolation to other bodies of truth you are bringing another version of error are we learning now I hope that as you are listening to me, God is showing you where the problem is. That it's not that you are in complete ignorance, but you've, you've not been able to synergize these truths. For others, character and moral excellence. And as wonderful as it is, because in society, the moment you are an advocate of character and moral excellence, society seems to have a heightened respect for you. And that is correct. But there are many people who believe that just having character or moral excellence alone will magically make everything work out for you in life. So you have sincere people. They will not steal. They will not sin. They love God with all their hearts. And there is nothing. For instance, our missionaries. For instance, sincere advocates of the gospel. You see nothing working in their lives. The trouble here is that their children have been watching that mistake for a long time. And the children are already making secret vows I will never be like this person and if we do not correct this a generation is going to come that will stand upon the grave of their parents and curse God to his face are we learning so I choose deliverance and warfare that is my key another person says I choose character and moral excellence another person says i don't believe in all these your things i'm going to confess the word that's my own there none of them is, because you can see um little little results from those experiences meaning there is the power of god backing it but it was never supposed to be in isolation now the human body i wrote here is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. Let me take it again. The human body is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. Let me take it one last time. The believers, the, the believers, the human body now, biology, bi biology now, I'm speaking biology. The human body is the most visible clue to how God designed the believer's life to function. That means if you can understand how the body functions, then you can understand how the believer should function. You can understand how victory is wrought. Look at me, please, ladies and gentlemen. You are seated here because you are alive and you woke up this morning. Am I right on that? You most likely stretched yourself, took your bath, ate, laughed, did all kinds of things, walked, and did so many things to find yourself here now you are listening to me there are many things you take for granted but medical science will teach us that just to be able to listen to me you will have to examine the many things that are working in your body to make listening and understanding happen are we together there are people for instance who have dementia it's a condition where they forget things am i right on that and yet those people are not dead they are alive but a component of their life is wrong and look how much it can affect them there are people for instance who have stroke a part of them may be paralyzed because of something that happened to their brain they are not dead yet they are incapacitated in many ways now i want you to imagine the parallel of that in the spirit how many people carrying spiritual dementia they are born again how many people carrying spiritual epilepsy why because an aspect that was supposed to make for their overall health was deadened through pride through wrong mentorship or through complete ignorance 
Have you had cases, for instance, now respectfully speaking, where a patient is grounded and the only thing that moves in the patient is his eyes? Have you seen that kind of thing? The hands cannot move. The limbs cannot move. And yet the person is alive. He can't respond. Yet he's hearing you. Imagine that kind of pain. Some of us have had our loved ones go through that thing. And you can imagine the pain. Looking at a human being, an adult. Do you know there are many like that spiritually? The only thing moving is their eyes. The only thing is that you saw them give their lives to Christ. Spiritual hands not working. No progress. No nothing. The assignment of tonight's teaching is to bring permanent deliverance to that condition. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. I wrote here, the human body is composed of living cells. Medical science will tell us. The human body is composed of living cells that are now organized into tissues into organs and systems this is what medical science tells us that what you call a human body is a composite of living cells that have been organized into tissues organs and systems i did a little study while preparing my notes and i just want to make reference to a little material that I consulted just to help us understand how this works because in the name of Jesus the gates of your destiny must be opened and your life must become a praise to the nations in the name of Jesus Christ now in studying I came across several materials that I consulted and I was just trying to see how many systems are in the human body just as a way of showing uh, and, and of course, the references are relative. I'm not teaching professionally. I'm just trying to communicate a point. Now, watch this. I, I read here that the human body has at least nine systems grouped together. And I'll run through them for you. You may write or you may listen. In any case, just make sure it enters your spirit. Are we together now? Number one here is called the integumentary system that composes of the skin and associate structures and the assignment is to protect the body from harmful microorganisms that means the integumentary system that is composed of the skin your skin as you know so that is a system do you know that there are people who are alive and you've seen them with skin infections is that a good sight to behold are we together? I have prayed for many people who have had acute breakouts of boils or some kind of skin infection, you know, maybe eczema, whatever it is. And sometimes you see lovely people, but that is not a good sight simply because one system was faulty. Can I continue? Number two, here is the musculoskeletal system, or you can call it your skeletal system mixed made up of your muscles and your skeletal system consult the doctors if you are in any i'm not here to spell i'm here to teach just get what i'm telling you praise the name of the lord the musculoskeletal system watch this now other references will say the muscular system and then the skeletal system it's written here that is composed of the skeletal muscles and for an adult, we are told that there are about 206 of them. You must listen in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that the assignment, watch this now. Don't be distracted. The assignment is to move the body and to protect the, the, the internal organs. Imagine your organs without the bones and the skeletal system. Some of us are learning now for free. That these bones that you have looked down on, when the Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is broken, it is because it has the assignment to protect you. Are we together now? That is just two out of nine. Are you ready for number three? The respiratory system is composed of the breathing passages, lungs, muscles for respiration. It obtains air and the oxygen necessary for cellular metabolism is written here. Now, the respiratory system, this is one system alone. 
Do you know you can isolate the respiratory system and by focusing on it, it looks like no other system is useful again. Because if you stop breathing, you will die. But there is a way to die while you are still breathing. Am I right on that? Mm -hmm. Number four. This is koinonia. Number four. Are you ready? Thank you. Let's pay attention. The circulatory system, the circulatory system composed of the heart, the blood, the blood vessels, and it circulates a transport fluid throughout the body. So it's responsible for circulating blood, oxygen, and you know, whatever is needed, the circulatory system. There are people who are alive, but the moment this system is found wanting, Number one, the kind of money you will pay to correct this condition. You are still breathing and yet your entire life's earning can be invested to correct this with no 100% guarantee. The circulatory system. Can I give you number five? The digestive system. My medic, is that medical people or koinonia people? Thank you. God bless you. Even if I don't score A, I will not score F. <laughs> I reject F in the name of Jesus. The digestive system, are we together? Composed of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, and it breaks down food into usable substances which are then absorbed from the blood or the lymph. This is what is written here. Are you seeing that now? How many people have gone to the hospital simply because something was wrong with their digestive system? Are they dead? No. Are they breathing? Yes. Can they hear? But they are still not all right. And they were, they were so not all right, they had to leave their house to the hospital. Are we together now? Ask the doctors. The hospital is broken into many, many sections that are dealing with many, many parts of the human body. You would think the hospital would just have a, an ICU and then a, a labor ward and that's all. But there are many other parts dealing with the human body. Look at the expensive machines that we invent simply because we are hoping that with advancement in technology we will rescue just one part of the human system. What makes you believe that by ignoring a particular dimension in the spirit you will have wholesome victory? I'm helping you using biology to understand what you may have been missing. So for some of us, maybe from the day you got born again, that spiritual digestive system has not even been working. Number six, the excretory system. Excretory system composed of the kidneys. Remember kidneys. Ureters, urinary bladder, and all of that. It removes toxic nitrogen compounds and other wastes from the blood. Look up please. Have you seen a patient crying to raise money for kidney transplant? Do you know how much it is? I'm not a medical doctor, but you go to a medical stand, they will tell you. It is not, maybe in Nigeria, Naira should be within the range of maybe 7 to about 12 or 15 million Naira just for a kidney transplant. That is when you do find a donor and then it does not come with a 100% guarantee. The assignment of the excretory system is to remove wastes. To remove wastes from your body there are people who have died simply because their kidneys packed up and every other thing related to that system number seven the nervous system the nervous system composed of the sensory organs the brain the spinal cord and the nerves and here's what it does it transmits integrates and analyzes sensory information and it carries impulses to effect the appropriate muscular or glandular responses in the body. This is what I'm reading. I didn't write this. Credit to medical science. Are we together now? Nervous system. 
How many people look at you and say, who are you? And you are saying, me, your friend. They are alive, but something has happened. No coordination again. Are we still here? Brain damage, spinal cord issues. I have prayed for many, many people. And I say this without exaggeration. Many, many people who, who have, have literally been grounded and left for dead because something happened to their spine and there was a complete damage, completely. Number eight. It's written here, the endocrine system. The endocrine system is composed of the hormone secreting glands and tissues that provide chemical communication network for coordinating various body processes. For instance, hunger, the impulses of hunger, the impulses of stress and all of that. Did you know that if you do not have that endocrine system, you will not even know if you were hungry, you will not even know if you were satisfied, what of, you know, several other things. As, as minute as these things are, they add to the human being you see standing. Nine, the reproductive system. We are struggling today counting how many people are on earth because of this one system. The efficiency of this one system. Look what it has done. Hmm. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So, I just, I just did a, a bit of, of, of biology just to help you understand this reference here allows for about nine, nine of the systems that make up the human body. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have family doctors and what you call a medical checkup, when the doctor comes, he checks you against these things. Am I right on that? There are others that will require you going to the hospital. You have all kinds of advanced tests to ascertain the health of these systems. When a doctor says you are healthy, what he's saying is that you largely have been examined across these systems and you've, your body has been found to be functioning well or within the range that they define as healthy. Am I right on that? Now you understand Romans 1.20 that the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen and being understood by the things which are made. Please look up. I hope you know that no man assisted God in the building of man. It was exclusively a product of his intelligence. That means anything that wants to become an organism must subscribe to the same law he used to build the body. No wonder the church is called the body of Christ. Are we together now? Now, I want you to think with me for a moment that all the truths that we know or should know are responsible for making the various spiritual systems that make up our lives work. For instance, understanding the laws of prosperity and the economic system of the kingdom. You can liken it to any of these nine systems. You can be healthy and strong. You can be a missionary with character, love God, and yet that part of your life fails and it can cripple your life and push you to the corridors of compromise. Are we together now? Yes. So in contending for the victorious life, it is very, very important that we make reference to the human body and see how God meticulously worked out systems that the skeletal system alone has about 206 bones, the skeletal structure that make an adult. If God went that far, now do you notice something from this description that all the systems, although they are powerful, they do not all carry equal value. Is that true? Some systems and organs are more delicate than others. That means in order of priority, the doctor or the consultant will pay attention to seeing to the health of a particular organ even before the other. I'm aware that there are doctors who may have a patient that requires multiple treatment and professionally they 
have been taught to focus on the vital organs that keep the person alive. Sometimes they may have to dress the person, he will go and heal for months, then return back. Am I right on that? To carry out the other procedures. This is, listen, biology should help us understand the ways of God. Show me a man who has promoted his digestive system alone and is alive and strong. Show me a man who has promoted his respiratory system alone and downplayed digestion and downplayed his neurological system. But why do we now do this in the body of Christ? Why do we now do this spiritually? I choose prosperity alone. Anything that has to do with prayer, I'm not interested. Or I am a prayer man, I'm a deliverance man. Anything that has to do with impartation of wisdom is unnecessary. That deception I'm announcing to you, is it comes from the pit of hell. And it is the reason why there is no wholesome victory in the life of believers. Hallelujah. So many of us right now are likened to patients who can be healthy and yet there's something that is wrong and God desires to bring wholesome victory wholesome victory in our lives wholesome victory in our lives that you can be like someone who is so healthy and vibrant while we were in the United Kingdom having the conference one of the testifiers a dear woman and when she stood to testify she said she was 65 years and when I looked at that woman if you were told she were 35 probably she's even following now 65 years alive agile I've seen people who you have a, a daddy that your who comes here now I think this year he'll be 86 and yet he comes strong moving by himself only once or so or never gone to a hospital and his wife who is 10 years younger 75 when I go for programs in the East they show up together healthy and alive yet there's another person 31 and you have to be told that this person is not that old I'm not being sarcastic I'm just saying whether you look young or look old it's not god's fault it's something you allow to happen to you is that true right now there is a heightened awareness the wellness industry is programming you know and pushing organic living there are many of you that's your business line you can tell us how to be healthy how to be strong that is the same thing i'm doing what you are doing biologically now is what i'm doing i'm i'm saying that there is a problem who knew before that there are certain foods that when you eat could accelerate your death rate? Am I right on that? Spiritually, there are certain revelations that if you receive or don't live alone, they will fast track your defeat. It is true. There are things about God. There are things about Satan. There are things about life that must come under divine scrutiny so that there be an editing. But I love the person who taught me. That's not the issue. Even if it was Joshua Selman who taught you, let God be true and let every man a liar be a liar. Our loyalty to things that are maybe lesser truths or truths that are isolated or, you know, information that is not even truth. We hold on to it. This is all I've known. And yet God is asking you tonight, do you desire your tomorrow greater than your today? then you must be willing to relinquish certain things. When I receive advices from, you know, medical people, and I, I have so many of them around my life, they can advise and say, listen, take water, do this, do that, do that. That's the advice. And sometimes, how many of you know that you can see something you used to like or you still like? And painfully so, you remember the instruction that came from the consultant and you are there salivating hoping for a chance and you are saying i mean why did i meet this doctor to advise me i would have remained but you have a choice you can eat it and die or you can trust god for grace and leave it and then you leave ladies and gentlemen please hear me i'm pointing something powerful for you tonight that i'm hoping you understand 
Apostle, I saw my father love the Lord. He served the Lord with all his heart, but we had to go and eat in the house of certain neighbors. What kind of God is that? Uh, 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 let me answer you now. That is not a reflection of what God can do. It is a reflection of the human body again and the inability to contend for wholesome health. Are we together now? That every time we allow a dimension of our body to not move forward, uh, the template we give the world can misrepresent God. So, if you have to learn God only from the lens of that missionary, what kind of God is this that has a missionary loving him with all his heart, serving him with all his heart, and yet the school fees of the children cannot be paid? Every time they are sending them back home, and then they come and they are praying, Oh God, will you not answer us? And yet there is an unbeliever giving scholarships to people under the same heaven. What kind of a God is that? It is not a description of God. It is a description of your state. Hmm. Hallelujah. So for instance, there are believers who are always praying, always praying, always, you know, casting out, binding something. And I'm not, a, I minister deliverance here, you see. But that's all they know. They will never sit down to learn the ways of God. And the devil has seen that there is a big gap. There are other aspects of their Christian life that has not been brought together. And so he keeps manipulating them and demons keep playing games around their destiny. And for a long time, after 10 years, they are still doing the same thing and not moving forward. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place. Watch this. How many of you have seen the athletes that win? Or footballers that play watch people who pack a stadium full to watch 22 players in a field there's none of those players that will be able to go to that field and command your attention if they are not healthy are we together now some of them with with advancement in technology now have opened us up to their training routine what makes them the champions that we celebrate and you can see they will show you their dieting they will show you their workout structure are we right on that and that that is what produced that basketballer or that footballer because of the results they have commanded we have now even gone into their private life to probe do you know that what they are doing is the scripture that says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and now say, how are you doing this? That when men say there is a casting down, yours is a lifting up and you tell them there is a system responsible for the empowerment of the saints. Do you know about it? And they say, I was never taught. Now you don't condemn them. You say, come, let me show you. And in one year, two years, like a patient who was sick, you have corrected that part of them. Now he becomes a pastor with integrity, but in addition to that, he's empowered economically to send his children to school. Or you find one who is doing well financially, but the knowledge of God is zero, character zero, and you tell him, listen, there is an aspect of the kingdom life you may be missing. Can I show you? And the person says, I thought money was everything. I was mentored to believe once you have money, whether you have character or not, it doesn't matter. And you tell him, no, there is a system in the kingdom Kingdom. the absence of character even with money will bring a deficiency to your life can I show you now you open that person up now he becomes a prosperous person having character or a preacher who is very administrative and loves God he can put things in place but the principles of building people methodically to make people who are mighty and of stature is not there and you Bring him like Aquila and Priscilla and expound to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. Now he does not just become a church administrator. He becomes a teaching priest indeed. Or one who is a sound teacher 
but the messages are full of propositions without the engracing to produce results. God can heal, no healing. God can lift, no lifting. God can bless, no blessing. You are blessed in Jesus' name, amen, no results. And you can bring the person and say, sir, there is a system of empowerment in this kingdom that even when you have knowledge, there is another system like the human body. Have you been taught that? Say, no, I was just taught that once I have the word, that's all. He said, no problem. Don't feel bad over the person who taught you. He did his best. But let me show you, there is another system where you tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Even after three and a half years of mentorship by Jesus himself, you still need them empowerment that man receives that impartation and by next Sunday when he goes there in the name of Jesus be healed and suddenly to his shock something has come upon my pastor he's no longer just that empty teacher what has been added the patient is now better the patient is now recovering as I'm teaching tonight, just imagine a patient in ICU and a doctor, this time not Joshua Selman, Jesus himself is fixing the many systems that are going wrong, that at the end of it, that patient will jump up, healthy digestive system, healthy respiratory system. Are we together? All the nine systems I listed, how could you be a failure under that condition of health? Thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. You believe what I'm sharing? Then another person says there are no demons anywhere. Well, forget about all those demons thing. There's no such thing as that. But you are seeing the classic signature of oppression in all its definition. That the fact that you believe that already is a successful plot of darkness on your mind. And then you can come and say, listen, it is true that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, but there are dynamics to activating that truth. The same truth that brought us deliverance is the same truth that brought us healing. Yet there are believers who are still sick physically, including many preachers. That does not mean if you can still be sick as a preacher, sick as a man of God, what makes you believe you cannot be oppressed? It takes revelation. There is a higher dimension. But until you get there, you must administer all the truths. It is not a doctor's ultimate desire to remove a patient's appendix. Am I right on that? It is not the doctor's ultimate desire to put some metals in a patient. But those things become necessary processes if that's what will be involved to, for the survival of the patient. This is what we do sometimes. So even though in the beginning it was not so, in managing people, we deploy every scriptural mechanism that insists on their health. Are we together? Apostle, I don't know what is happening to me. I don't believe in myself again. I'm depressed. There's this mental health. I want to go and commit suicide. You think that's just because there's no job? That's a spirit. That's a spirit. You know what it means to kill yourself? Where there are people begging for life, they will give up anything for life. Yet another person will go and hang himself on a tree and kill yourself or take drugs. It has to be a spirit. How many people testify and they will tell you a voice was telling me, kill yourself and die. The devil stopped them from hearing the Holy Ghost. Yet without training, they can hear a demon spirit. Are we together? The assignment of that is deliverance. That when you come by the word, that spirit, in the name of Jesus, we command that devil to leave. And when that devil leaves, then we can now start mentoring and building the person now. Are we together? Closing that door by giving you a renewed spiritual orientation. See who you are in Christ and then to help you to stand. Imagine if all the doctors now said, once you are a Christian, you are not admitted in the hospital because Christ has died for your sins. You know how many of us will be left? There are 2.6 billion Christians on earth now. About a billion of them are Roman Catholics according to statistics. And then, you know, all other sects spread the remaining that is left. 2.6 billion people, thanks to the ministry of doctors. So when you read the Bible, you will see that none shall say in Zion, I am sick. Yet go to, um, why do we have a medical stand? 
full of very excellent and exceptional doctors, by the way, and paramedics and medics. Why do we have such a stand when we believe in the power of God? Because of an expression of God's love and the insistence to attend to everyone at every level. Now, there is a level you can attain unto in Christ through growth and transformation. Are we together now? Yes. There is such a level that you can stand and literally be immune. You would have conquered the realm of defeat. But it does not just happen by impartation. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. It is a progression of growth that depends on your level of alignment, the quality of the truth you are receiving, and the longevity of your stay in his presence. But while that happens, there are medical doctors that midwife people and I'm telling you that we are alive today thanks to medical doctors. Imagine the women who confessed scripture and said in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not have CS, I will have a normal delivery. But eventually the doctor said, you need to go through CS. Imagine if they refused and said, I will not do CS. They would have died for nothing and some of you will not be here. Are we together? Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you today? The human body is alive and victorious simply because of this. So if I jump, this jump alone, can you tell me how many systems were healthy to have made this happen? If my skeletal system alone was faulty, I would not be able to jump as little as this is. I've been holding the mic for a while now. Did you know that there are people, their, their neurological system is so broken, they cannot even handle anything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. My call for you is, what part of the kingdom truth have you ignored? And look at the effect. I'm giving you a medical parallel so that you will see. Could it be that something you ignored is why poverty seems to be ravaging your family? I don't believe the prophetic. Prophets and apostles are all liars and fake. No, 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 no. There might be issues in the body of Christ with the prophetic and the apostolic ministry, but don't throw the baby under bad water. You will be going through issues in life that only the prophetic can solve. And because you have made up your mind that that system will not work for you, you will be limited for years over something that can be corrected in just five minutes. Imagine if Saul continued to roam around to say he was going to look for the donkey by himself. He probably would have died a beast in the, in the wilderness, would have eaten him for nothing. And he said, let's stop wasting this time. There is a man, a seer, whose word does not fall to the ground. As soon as he met Samuel, Samuel showed him the value of the prophetic. He said, go up, leave the issue that brought you here. I will tell you what is in your heart. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? And another chapter of his destiny opened. Imagine Samaria without Elisha. Imagine Jesus without John. Are we learning now? So, congratulations for all you have learned. And thank God for we men of God who continue to do our best. And for as long as God grants us grace, we'll continue to do our best to teach that which we know. But I beseech you by the message of God, that when you have an opportunity to contend for higher, superior, provable truths, that you do not harden your heart, doing yourself a disservice, but that your heart be open. The goal is not to say, so, 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 and so did not teach me well. No, that's not the idea. But that we must be humble. Watch this now. If I am a consultant, say a bone, a bone specialist, that's my area of specialty. With the whole description I've given you now, imagine someone who comes to meet me and says, um, Dr. So-and-so, I have a very serious problem with my kidneys. I have a problem, you know, with the entire excretory system. And I said, well, that's unnecessary. The most important thing is make sure once your skeletal system is fine, you are going to be all right. Do you think that patient is going to leave? No. So for me to admit that my area of professionalism, I'm not a consultant in everything. I'm a consultant, I'm a, okay, I'm a bone specialist. 
Now you tell the person, well, when it has to do with this, there are people who are graced and given that, that understanding here. I can only attend to you and recommend. And this has been my call, especially to we men and women of God. Let us not destroy God's people because of pride. We do not know everything. Stay in your area of excellence and call. Give your very best. But be open and let God's people find holistic truth and development. This is not just to allow people to be careless and roam around from pillar to post, but we must be honest. I know it's an uncomfortable truth, but we must get to a point where we admit that we do not know everything. There's, there's not, there, it does not reduce you. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many people who would have been healed today if only they were given a chance to see the value of healing. And sometimes, the way we act as men of God is the area we do not have grace for, we trivialize. We say it's not necessary. No, it's... It, see, do you know after COVID, there are many pastors here and they will bear me witness. Do you know that after COVID, many pastors went under pressure because members were incapacitated financially till now. There are pastors literally... I have the privilege of speaking with so many people and they say apostle I'm, it's almost as if we're in trouble because members are saying we were downsized we don't have jobs man of god you told us that god is able to help can the church give us scholarship and the and the woman has five children hundred hundred thousand for one person but when the word of god came to empower them economically you told them don't worry the most important thing is love the lord and we misquote scriptures that said, don't worry about this, take no thought of what to eat without understanding what the scriptures were saying. By the privilege of God's grace and not to brag, I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. I'm involved in the life of many families and many children, believe me. And I know how much is committed and invested literally daily and weekly to keep many families and many people alive and strong. And, so, and for most of these families, they are Christians. And you will be asking, okay, what was the system of mentorship they were exposed to? And why all these gaps? There are many young people now getting into fraud, internet fraud and the rest. And most of them are church people. And we're asking questions. They are praying in tongues. But while they are praying in tongues, they are about to cheat somebody in the night. Are we together now? Now listen carefully. And we may say it does not matter. Until the day the church starts grooming armed robbers. There are robbers that kidnap people and catch people and quote scriptures and even laugh. They are not ignorant people. It's just that there are systems we are ignoring in the body of Christ. And it's beginning to tell now. Artificial intelligence is taking over the place of employment. In the, many people are not prepared for the world that is coming in the next 5 to 10 years. Listen to what I'm telling you. Many believers will say it doesn't matter. I have God. God is all like you are right. But do you know the dynamics of allowing the power of God to work in your life? There is a generation that will be exposed to the world that they do not know anything about. And I'm not talking of the next 20 years. The next 5 to 10 years, there will be casualties in the body of Christ if we do not restore wholesome knowledge that produces wholesome victories. So we're going to have a bunch of people who will truly, because you see the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth. There are people, the only thing they are seeking is prosperity. They are seeking the loss of the kingdom by fire, by force. And through diligence, they will find it. The trouble is, if the only thing they find is prosperity, when a man prospers and he does not have character, he becomes a weapon of mass destruction to himself and to society. Then there will be a group of frustrated people who love the Lord, character, loving Jesus with all their hearts. And yet you find out that nothing will work in their lives. And in pain they will say, God, why did you do this to me? Other people were bribing, other people were doing all of that and I avoided this because of my love for you. We've been shouting for a very long time. The wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. We've been saying these things since I was growing up. Till now, the wealthy people are getting wealthier and the church is suffering. We are suffering. We are getting into trouble. We are in debt. We are in all kinds of things. 
And those people sometimes watch with shock what we are saying. Because those things are true, but those statements are incomplete. The dynamics of the workings of those strategies we have not learned. Are we together? How about power? Sometimes we talk against herbalists and all of that. I would never promote evil and, you know, demonic things. But I'm saying that we, we say don't go to herbalists, don't go to the devil, don't do all of these things. Okay, I refuse to go to the devil and I've come to you, Joshua Selman. The truth is that I need you to help me. Things are not working in my life. And I say, well, things are not working just because you are not serious. And the person says, I'm a diligent person. What do you mean I'm not serious? As elaborators, what I'm saying is, this is speaking to the pain of many of you seated looking at me right now. There are many of you who already have accumulated frustration. You are just getting almost to a, a breaking point where it's as if, look at our young people and their disdain for church. There's not much of that happening because in Africa we still have, you know, our, you know, our moral fabric is still, is still intact to an extent. But you go across the world and you see empty churches that you find a church with 100 people and they're celebrating. They call that a crowd. And yet, a secular person or someone somewhere who is about to do something godless and from morning till night, people pack up theaters and pack up everything, celebrate, and we think it does not matter. Wait until a godless society takes over the helm of government. Then you will see what happens. Preachers are getting discouraged because even they themselves are not understanding why this thing is not working again. After preaching and writing books for many years, I cannot understand why this is working again. I thought the key was confession. I have confessed the word sincerely. I have done it with all my heart. What else is left? Oh, there is a lot that is left. I have walked in holiness and righteousness, you will say, loving the Lord sincerely with all my heart. What else is left? There is still a lot that is left. I've been diligent and hardworking. I sleep late in the night. I wake up early in the morning. I'm, I'm, I've given myself to trainings and, and the rest. What else is left? There is still a lot more that is left. My assignment tonight is to provoke you, to let you know that that victorious life in Christ is your destiny but like the human body ladies and gentlemen there is a call to explore the other dimensions that have not yet been added to produce wholesome victory otherwise we are going to be quoting scripture thanks be to God who causes us to triumph and we will watch our loved ones sadly continue to die in ill health because we are not willing to explore the vast riches. What are the keys that control the healing anointing? What are the keys that control prosperity and wealth? What are the keys that control influence? What are the keys that control longevity? What are the keys that control excellence? What are the keys? We need to find these keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I submit to you, there is no single man that has all the keys by himself. God himself will not even allow that. You can have all the keys work in your life and that by gleaning to the body, the larger body, through humility, to receive other keys that may not be in your personal experience with God. Are we together? Open your Bible and read and you will find what is written there. And you will see what is happening in your life versus what the Bible says should happen. It says your children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Yet you love the Lord with all your heart and you have trained five children. Not one of them is walking. Not one of them is risen. All born again, spirit filled. And every morning you hear the sound of those children. They wake you up with their prayers. You, they, you sleep while they are praying. And yet you are saying, what kind of a God is this? That after five years, he cannot give, even if he's one of my child, a job. I am telling you, the problem is not God. There is something about the system he designed that we do not understand. Are we together? Yes. I'm born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but people don't like coming around me. I don't even have friends. What kind of thing is this? It must be demonic. Okay, we agree that there are spirits there. Okay, you come for miracle service and these spirits are casted. Yet, after five months, you still don't have any friend. 
What is wrong? Another spirit. You may be having a journey forever that will cause you pain. The real key is to now go back. Now that that deliverance has happened, what are the laws that govern relationships? He that wants friends must show himself friendly. You learn people's skills. You learn the law of honor. You see, when you learn these other dimensions, you find out in one week, you can have great friends and that includes your destiny helpers coming along. Are we together? I'm a man of God, but why is it that I'm not succeeding in ministry? I will tell you, among many other reasons, it can be that you are not providing the kind of results, the kind of value, even though spiritual, that is needed and useful. Can people come to you? Can they come and learn God from you and be sure they will not be disappointed? Can they come and you pray for them and they are sure that they will return with testimonies? Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something psychologists teach us that one of the indices the major index that measures our concept of happiness is progress i hope you know that that the degree to which you perceive you are making progress it would translate to joy in your heart and i can tell you it is true even as a man of god it is true i'll be wicked to just downplay i come here every week i'm happy there are so many people inside, outside, everybody. I am happy God sent me, but I am happy you are coming because it is proof that the value is changing you. It is proof that something is changing in your life. Are we together now? If I can be happy as a man of God that I'm making progress, why will not I not want the people that God brings around me to also make progress? They may not be preachers, but what is wrong in you having your own house? After 20 years, what is wrong in you at least having a car? It's not all about cars, but must you trek for the rest of your life? Is that the will of God? Say no. no. I can't be the will of God. And you know, sometimes we downplay these things and say it does not matter. And a gentleman was trekking since he was in, in college. And now after 30 years, he's holding four children and his wife. He's still trekking, praying in tongues for 20 years, quoting scripture for 20 years. Something is not working. It's not just about money. I'm just using this to show you that when a system is faulty in your life, there is the, the deficiency becomes clear and your children can come and inherit that deficiency. I vowed and I told myself that everything I had to suffer in my life, anybody that comes from me, physical, spiritual children will never go through that again. This is why you see me laboring to tell you this. It is from a heart of love. As for me, I believe the things I'm teaching and I'm honored, I thank God that I have my results to show. So if I do not love you, I will not care. I will just say, let's come and pray and go. If you are fortunate to have a testimony, may God bless you. No, not here, not here. I will insist in love. If it's to cry, we will cry together. If it's to pray, we will pray together. If it's to be diligent, we'll be diligent together until your life becomes a praise to the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people who have downplayed prayer. They are hard working, but they do not pray because they do not know that in the place of fellowship, there is an advantage that comes upon your life. And so when you talk about prayer, they say, don't mind all these poor people. They are just praying because they are poor and broke. No, you may be making a mistake. And so most of them say the only demon is, you know, and they make all kinds of statements that should not be. Eventually, the person becomes a billionaire and one strike from hell and all that money vanishes. Back to my example on the human body. I mentioned nine systems that I want you to pay attention to because I truly believe, and you are to, if you are to be honest with yourself, it's possible that one or more systems may be found wanting even if it has not gone to a point it has not packed up maybe it's declining you know how doctors can warn people and say look i checked your sugar level it's not yet so bad but be careful because you are you are having is going down or you, you understand that that's what god is doing to some of us the trouble has not yet manifested but it's on its way if you do not change Thank 
Randoga Baranzo Seleke Prendeke Bariata. Write this down. The believer's victory. Please write this down. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. The believer's victory will only be made manifest. Please underline the word manifest. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. What are the systems of the kingdom? Like the various parts of the human body. There is the prayer system. There is the speaking of the word, you know. There's the place for mental transformation. There's the place for character and moral excellence. There's the place for diligence. I like to use the word diligence instead of hard work. There's the place for relationships. There's the place for the anointing. There is the place for patience. There's the place for mentorship. These are the various systems that are responsible. Maybe I should run through a few of them again. There's the prayer system designed to help men make contact with God. I have taught you, listen to my teachings on prayer, the assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. How about the place of the word? Confessing the word, studying the word, make reference to my teaching, equipping the saints. I preach it in Zaria. It's on our global page. Mental transformation. There are many believers who do not subscribe for mental transformation. They love God, they pray, they fast, but their understanding is so barren and unfruitful. It cannot purchase anything notable because of a level of mental bankruptcy. And I'm not just talking from an academic standpoint. Enlightenment, understanding how life works. The Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be gentle as doves. It said, I send you as sheep among wolves. So be wise as a serpent. Why would God recommend a serpent when it has to do with having the wisdom of living in the cosmos? Mental transformation. Then there is a place of character. Then there is a place of diligence. There are people who pray and fast and study scripture, rightly so, but they never study the materials that lead to their excelling in their field of endeavor. The Bible gives you a holistic viewpoint of life, but as far as becoming excellent and gaining mastery is concerned, you have to be able to lay hold the area where God has called you into. If you're a career person, you must be excellent. You are a medical person, be excellent. Listen, there are two people who the Bible commended their prayer lives in the Bible. I, I don't want to take the time to teach on that, but just to teach you a very powerful lesson. One of them is Elijah. Elijah was even referred to in the book of James as a template to help us pray. But another person was Daniel. The difference between the two is Daniel did not just pray alone. Daniel was commended not just for his prayer life. Daniel was commended for the spirit of excellence and intelligence. And notice that of two of them, when we remember the one who had a systemic impact, we remember Daniel. They both prayed, but in addition, Daniel was intelligent. He was flawless. At least we know Elijah was an angry man. Because there are certain things about administration and leadership. If he learned, it would have added to his prayer life and made him a better presentation of God's ambassador. And this was what Daniel, I, Daniel, understood by books. You never see I, Elijah, in addition to this. He called down fire. Yes, I agree. He judged the prophets of Baal, but he ran away. He ran away. You remember when he ran away? You never see Daniel running away because he was preserved by wisdom. Even in a strange and a foreign land, there were other things he had that stabilized him. His prayer was exceptional. He dealt with the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. But my goodness, they sought for an occasion to mock God and they did not find any. He was flawless. Unbelievers testified that he had the spirit of the gods there. Can they say that about you in office? Or the only thing they'll say is that you pray and you fast. You are, the, you are the poorest in terms of your job. 
You are, you, and you are saying, Apostle, you have to pray for me. I want to become the CEO. I love you, but I love the company too. Should it go down just because? Do you get what I'm teaching you now? Listen, I thank God. I study and I pray. But let me tell you sincerely, and I will not lie to you. There, there is a dimension of understanding that only books will give you. You have to buy the truth and sit down. Most people want a global ministry. They want a global life. And all they have been taught that is responsible for global influence is impartation. You see that? Impartation is a system in the kingdom. But the value of impartation is that it comes upon a mind that has been transformed. Transformed through knowledge. Transformed through discipline. What is the call today? God is calling us. Calling us to a life of excellence. Calling us to a life of victory. God is calling us to rewrite the mistakes of those who have gone before us. And that if we keep following that template alone, without finding what else went wrong, to have produced the lopsidedness that we see in those who have gone before us, we will reproduce the same results, including the same limitations. Let me give you a final charge. Write this down. I truly believe that in the days that come, the days that are before us, the Lord will have believers to focus on three areas. Many areas, but three areas. And this came by the Spirit for me, and I said I'll use this to wrap up my session so that we'll pray. There are three major areas that believers must focus on and contend for victory in experience. Number one, your spiritual health. Please write it down. Number one, your spiritual health. That means this should be the areas of focus, especially within the season that we're in now. Your spiritual health. That includes your relationship with God. Matthew 22, please give us from verse 37. We're reading down to 40 your spiritual health jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind next verse this is the first and greatest commandment 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself it says on these two commandments hang the law and the prophet that means the purpose for all the law and the commandments that were given was a way of forcing you to achieve these two things to love the lord with all your heart and then to love your neighbor as yourself are we together now very important your spiritual health Romans chapter 8 from verse 35 Paul gives us a very intelligent rendition there he said who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness peril or the sword next verse we are reading to 38 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 it says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and then it says for I am persuaded may this be your persuasion tonight that neither death nor life read with me nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come uh -huh, shall be able nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in jesus christ our lord your spiritual health that you must love the lord above and beyond anything above and beyond anyone it's been my emphasis our precious people sang it here that we must love him we must seek him loving the lord means that your prayer life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your fasting life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your word study life must be up and alive your passion for the house of god your passion for the things of god must be up and alive number two what is the second area god will want us to focus on in this season write this down your personal needs hmm. your personal needs 
And ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Do not downplay this. Take it as a prophetic instruction. God wants you to begin to focus on your personal needs and get some results in place so that it can give you room to serve a bigger purpose. Are we together now? Yes. Your personal needs, food, shelter, and all the personal things that you need to put in place. If you don't think about it, you don't plan it, you don't take advantage of the grace of God to put things in place, it will never happen. Hallelujah. Your personal needs. That you make up your mind and say, by the grace of God, I should get to a point where this issue of thinking, where will I get money to buy food? Solve it. Solve it. So that you can have the time to do nobler kingdom things. When your personal needs are not sorted, I promise you, I wrote something down here. I said, your personal needs being met is the cure to depression and frustrations. When your personal needs are met, I can preach here and I can shout because I have Jesus in my heart, but I also have food in my house. Are we together now? Yes, sir. I have food in my house. So it has energized me to shout the word to your spirit because when I am done, I can go back. Jesus, your Jesus who preached at crusades. The Bible clearly told us that there were times he was hungry and there were provisions in place. Am I right on that? Listen to me. Please, I want you to take your personal needs seriously. Not just carnal needs, but that which is required to give you the stability to serve God. Like your children's school fees. Write it down and start doing something about it. Like the issue of a house. Write it down. Whether to rent or to build. In any way, take action. I have a responsibility over you. I will teach you the truth. It may not make sense now, but you will look back and say, thank you, apostle, for challenging me to take a step. There are people who come and dedicate your houses before the end of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. See, every time God gives instructions like this is because behind that instruction is a grace to make it happen. You know what will happen to you by the time you sort the issue of rent out of your life? And God helps you to put systems in place. Now you can send your children to good schools. Now you have the authorization to lock yourself for three days and you will not feel irresponsible. Now your prayer life will become richer. You can pray for three days, but not when your children are out of school and they are writing PTA letters and your relatives are calling you all kinds of names. Then you say you are in the retreat for three days. No. Please take your personal needs serious. There are things that if they are not in place, if you're a man of God here, thank God for ministry and thank God for everything, but please by all means, obtain grace to pay attention Oh, apostle, I think I need a car now to help me to be efficient in ministry. Do not think you are carnal for thinking that. If there is a legitimate need, write it down and obtain the grace and the wisdom to do something about it. Are we together? Our children are going to college now. Their school fees will be A, B, C. Let's sit down and think about it. Through desire, a man, Proverbs 18:1. Having separated himself, seeket and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Your personal needs. This is the season where God is ready to come through for you. You have prayed for others. You have interceded for others. Some of you, you are the ones that God has raised in your family. And everything that comes to your life is distributed. But in this season, God wants to sort your personal life. <laughs> If you believe that, say amen. amen. Can I tell you the truth? By the time you make progress and you move forward, God gives you a job. Some of these material blessings that come to help support your efficiency come. A car, a house, good children, a good spouse. You are very happy. You are doing well. Who told you your spiritual life will not be efficient? You know I'm not lying. 
Was that not what kept you awake in the night? And yet you were not praying. You were not praying and you were not sleeping. As for me, there are certain things I wave them goodbye. And the Spirit of God held their hands and forced them to wave me back. Are we together now? Yes. Please stay and sort certain things in your life. As a result of this teaching, don't just say this is a powerful revelation. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go back home and sit down. Pray in tongues for 10 minutes to avoid distraction. Then settle down. What is the meaning of this thing I've heard now? I have noticed. I don't even have clothes to wear. So when my destiny helpers call me, well, how will I go to them? Don't say it does not matter. And I'm not talking of living a fake life. Don't go and borrow money and start doing some of these things. Rather, receive favor when I'm praying for it. Are we together? But you need to go down. I found out. I just have one, one nice cloth. This is embarrassing. And it's not lack of money. It's lack of thinking and lack of planning. Go and look for a good tailor. Five, six nice clothes. Lord, thank you for your glory. And then the invitations can start coming for you. Because you are not even prepared for it. My CV. I know I've been applying and I'm tired, but let me take a step of faith. Let me start studying on relationships because I sense that soon God will bring a destiny helper to my life and let me learn how to talk to great people so that I don't close a door by myself. You don't have a job but use the time to learn on relationships. Oh, this is the protocol of greatness. This is how to talk to them. Every man's need is his point of contact. You are now learning. Then God will send somebody and with courtesy and discipline in the midst of this bedeviled generation, you greet somebody with manners and courtesy. The person looks and says, what kind of lady are you? Where are you coming from? Oh, you look like a face I've seen somewhere. That's the Holy Ghost playing his own part now. Do you have a job? No. Can you do the job of a secretary excellently? Yes. Can you manage 650000 for a start? Watch this. And by the time you come and testify, ignorant people will say, is it just that? But they don't know when you were studying people's skills, when you were crying for favor, you were engaging the various systems. I hope someone is learning. Don't say I don't have a job and you fold your arms grumbling and gossiping and getting angry. That does not produce the results. Do what you can do now. Pray, get materials, buy the truth. In the name of Jesus, he's called me to be a kingdom financier. I may not have anything now, but in the name of Jesus, let me give myself to learning. Let me give myself to diligence. When others are sleeping, you wake up. God has told you he's giving you a global ministry. Nobody knows you for now. Stop moving around with cards and saying, invite me. That's not how it works. Neither do men light a lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Be like John Wesley. He says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. Clamoring for invitations is not how it works. Going on social media and asking the world to follow you is not how it works. People follow results, not people. Now, thanks be to God. Minimize movies, minimize social media exposures. They are wonderful, but minimize it. Come into a realm of discipline where you say from seven to nine, I'm responding to emails and once it is nine, shut that email down. Not because you, can, you, are, you are training yourself. Your mind and your spirit is learning. Everything God gave man, he gave man authority over. The moment you do not have authority over elemental forces, how can you be trusted with the destinies of nations? Man of God, continue your prayer. It's a system that works. Continue the fasting. It's a system that works. Continue the night vigil. No invitations yet, but you just continue. Continue your watch study. Get books on church administration and be learning. Get books, the stories of the pain of people who made mistakes in ministry and some of them were open enough to show their scars. Don't make the same mistake. Use the opportunity to study. Ah, these are the pitfalls. When I get here, I will jump. Thank this man for showing me his scars. How does financing ministry work? 
Apostle, my own is that I must marry. I agree. Have you learned how to be a responsible father? Or are you just looking for a wife? Are we together now? What if your wife gives birth to twins in nine months? Are you ready for that? This is how to prepare for the blessing. You know, in church, I, I, I hope you are seeing my, my, my passion. I'm not just shouting for nothing. Most people in church are not prepared for what they are praying for. Lord, give me a, a wife. You've not managed yourself. You've not managed your home. You still call people and disturb them from morning till night. Bros, can you give me this? Can you? you are not ready for a family yet. It's as simple and as honest as that. The day you put your life in order, dress everything that is scattered in your room. Arrange your room as a proof that you are ready to train children. At that point, God will now honor you. You see how it works? We must restore responsible Christianity. The kind that makes believers become a praise. Until now, our lives become a mockery to the world. And we are just shouting amen. And that is wonderful. But ladies and gentlemen, I repeat to you that there is a world that if we do not stay with God, in the next five, ten years, Christians will not be able to relate with the world that is evolving. I assure you, financially, sociologically, we will be at a loss. The only thing that will change is not IT and technology. The thinking is changing. Civilizations change, but most believers are not staying with the word of God to know what the next 10 years will be like. And you see, sometimes we preachers that do not insist for your transformation, for some reason, because we are still offering value, whatever happens, we can secure ourselves at least in our homes and whatever it is. Whether I preach or I mislead you, somebody will give me 10 naira, somebody will give me 20 naira, and I can feed myself. But what about you? That's why everybody is becoming a preacher, because it looks like that's the only way to be blessed. I made up my mind and I vowed as a covenant with God that I will never manipulate anybody to collect 10 naira, 20 naira. The blessing of the Lord upon my life does not come because I'm a preacher. It comes because I understand the economic system of the kingdom. And it is not a secret. It can be learned. Like somebody can subscribe to be a tailor. And after three, five months, when you understand the human body that I described, you now see the aspect of your life that is not working. All you need to know is to methodically follow a proven pathway. Unfortunately, our world is full of liars across boards. People who claiming to know things without results to show so the Bible says there are some them you must follow not every them but some them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise koinonia hear me it is my desire according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 I have taught you here that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my primary assignment and in life and in death I will give my all to it but in addition to your spiritual vibrancy there is a mandate upon my life to raise a people of influence at a global scale it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee Yes. Don't just jump and say Abraham's blessings are yours. Knowledge can turn you from your lowly estate to rise to become a point where you become an envy to the world. And from that elevated standpoint, look what Jesus did for instance in Manchester. Look the kind of glory it brought. I know that many people say a lot of things and I give him all the glory. But did you know what it means to pack full that auditorium and feed over 2,000 people and not collect offering and not pay anything and not owe one pound? You know what it means to feed over 2,000 people and you are not a criminal? Until you have the result, keep quiet. Listen, we shouted these days from the days we were in one room. These are not things that just happen like this. It's not a mistake. It can be reproduced again. Don't think it's a mistake. No. He that strives for mastery is not crowned until he strives lawfully lawfully 
because God is giving a new face lift to his bride that we are presenting a portrait of a true apostolic and prophetic church that is not all about compromises it's not all about no there are people who can serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity but the key like somebody who has gone to the gym the digestive system is working well by the grace of God, I tell you, until Jesus comes, there will never be a point in this service where you will come and will say, oh, we need to pay for this, this, maybe the bill for this. No, 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 no. We will give people an opportunity to sow. But by the grace of God, you can lay hold on eternal life. There are things when you find you have found, there is nothing the devil can do about it. So don't think that when preachers speak, they are just speaking nonsense. No, no. I will not come and burden you here. There are sincere preachers who love God, but the moment their bills come upon them, they start compromising. They are not evil people. They have just allowed certain systems to be wanting in their lives. The call for you now is don't wait till your children start asking you questions and say, Daddy, where were you when God was teaching other people? Where were you when God was showing them the keys of accessing power through prayer and fasting? Why are you a pastor of a powerless church? And then you get angry and call them rude. Ah. May those that come out of us not ask us questions we cannot answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you. So anything that is not working in your life now. Look at you. You are the fourth or fifth or sixth born. Yet out of 12 people, you are the only person who has risen. Look at the pain it is causing for you. You are earning over one million, yet you cannot do anything. Because someone will have to call you. Do you think it is the will of God for you to be in that state? What if there is something you can know? Oh dear. What if there is something you can know? What if between where you are and where you need to go, there is something you need to know about value, about relationships, about influence? Daddy, do you want to pass on to glory and leave your children to become beggars? Do you want to go to your grave knowing that you did not live an excellent life? You see, the thing about the kingdom is that from any level you can start. Please listen to me. This is not just a preacher talking. This is from my heart. You came to church. You are watching your children grow, celebrating their birthdays every month, but there is no corresponding growth. Don't say it does not matter. A day will come you will watch your children if you don't walk on them become armed robbers and prostitutes because they have to make ends meet God wants you to sort the issue of your needs now if you need to seek counsel seek counsel you need to look for mentorship look for mentorship you need to go for advanced training go for advanced training you need to listen to messages do remember your children while you are doing it don't go to bed knowing that people will stand up and ask questions it is selfish to make decisions that do not have posterity in view Yet the church is full of people like this. We shout amen, we say amen, and we are programming a generation that will be on outright rebellion. By the time a child gets up and meets an irresponsible father, respectfully speaking, an irresponsible mother, they do not even know how his school fees was paid. I say this to you sincerely from my heart. There are people whose fees have been paying for years and decades. I have never seen their parents. They have not even come to find out who pays their school fees, who says to say thank you. That is the kind of, and many people are in church. I do this because I love Jesus and I do it with all my heart. But imagine if these ones were left and their lives and you go and find out that your daughter has become something else and you say you are an embarrassment to the family. No. All we say is demons. Yes, it may be coming from your father's house, but they took advantage of the deficiency of systems working to activate their operation. Are we together? When it's time to pray tonight, we'll pray oh, because someone needs to cry. While you are seated, I just want you to see the picture of your children and see all of them rejoicing and say, thank you, daddy. Thank you for listening to Apostle. Thank you. It looked like it was going to be too late, but thank you for making this decision. I'm not talking about hustling. You've tried to hustle. It did not work. 
this thing is not about this issue of fire by mm -mm 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 -mm. the system of the kingdom is so methodical and precise when you are properly mentored you will marvel and wonder at the exactitude that comes with the kingdom system it's not about trial and error if it is not there you do not understand it We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Let me finish what I must give you. I just gave you two. Number one, your spiritual health. I said these three areas the Lord put in my heart that this should be the area of focus in this season. That means you should stay in these areas till results and victory is producing experience. Number one, again, your spiritual health. Number two, your personal needs. It's time for some things to work in your life. It's time to have personal results. It's time for certain things, sort some things once and for all so that you can make constructive kingdom progress. And then number three, the third area that you should focus on is becoming an effective witness. Becoming an effective witness. You have been taught and you know by now that for the believer, your life is not your own. That there is a bigger purpose beyond your personal needs. A bigger purpose beyond just your family, your children, your career. Your purpose must be connected to kingdom come to have eternal value. Hallelujah. The reason why God is helping us and causing us to know him. The reason why God is opening us to the wisdom systems and the dominion systems that make for an excelling life. Is so that we can have the liberty and the access to now serve his purposes. To serve his purposes with our lives. Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 34. 3 and 34. Am I right on that? Please look for it for me. My meat is to do and to the will of him that has sent me and to finish it. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. My will is to do my meat is to do John 4, my apologies, 34. My meat, my satisfaction, my nourishment, that which energizes me is to do the will of him. Not just to get a job, not just to get a pay raise. These things are within the circumference of your personal needs. Do you know that there is a realm where God can sort your life? And you can focus when you wake up in the morning. It's not about children's school fees again. It's not about a house or house rent or a car or whatever it is. When you get up in the morning, it's Father, what are we doing for the kingdom today? And it tells you there is a crusade happening somewhere. The budget is a hundred million. And you say, Lord, can, I, can you give me the privilege of writing it off? And you call and say, let it be done. Pray about something else, not the finances. This is your life participating in kingdom come. Or you build a house and you say, any missionary that comes here let this be the place where they will rest ah, it is such a beautiful way when you know your life is counting as far as the kingdom is concerned there are many of you here in one of these days God will so empower you you will just get up and go to an orphanage and and say for the next one year for the next one year you will give them materials, you will give them Bibles, you will give them food that can take them for one year and tell them, I came as a representative of Jesus. I came to show you the love of Jesus. I was an orphan myself and now I know your pain, but I brought you the gospel. 
the, a gospel that has been carried on a bag of rice, the gospel that has been carried on a bag of spaghetti, the gospel that has been carried on a year's worth, they will listen to it. Hallelujah. Or some of you will see some man of God who is laboring sincerely, maybe in the village or where you come from, and he's not had the privilege to know what you are knowing. And because God has blessed you, you have activated all the systems in the kingdom that make for holistic dominion and victory. Now you can get a can, call him and say, Sir, I know that you may not know all it takes, but it is an honor for me and my wife and my children that we are contributors to your loving Jesus, to your remaining intact and serving him in truth. And the man with the tears in his eyes will kneel down and bless you to your children's children but everything I'm saying will remain a story and a parable until the systems of the kingdom are activated and ladies and gentlemen my assignment as always and especially this year this year of open doors is to show you system after system like you train a medical student in school they have all kinds of courses anatomy physiology community medicine all of those studies together that's all it takes to be a doctor but they have to go through it some of the classes are boring some of the classes are exciting they will stand before a cadaver and have to work or needs to learn surgical procedures but that is what it takes are you willing to endure the training that makes for a champion this is the last question God is asking you tonight apostle can you summarize this sorry it does not work like that in the kingdom imagine a doctor who tells his professor I'm year one can you summarize everything I already know chemistry just show me where to put the injection show me how to cut people open and in two months I'm that brilliant I can finish no see how long it takes a medical student to become a doctor six years minus any other thing and that is just the entry level you know how long it will take that person to become a consultant but after they endure with with precision look how many of you have watched masters in fields whether a senior advocate whether a consultant the the, the intelligence and the confidence that comes because you the systems of god can be understood they are finite learn the laws of prosperity don't just run around saying i want to do business put my money here no 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 that's not what you need first you need illumination from heaven to know how the system works what is god's relational system how does god connect people to destiny help us what is the system that guarantees the anointing how can i import the anointing as a product that when i'm traveling i know it is traveling with me when i'm on stage i know it is with me Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What are the systems of favor in this wicked world? Can I lay hold of it? This is my assignment to teach you. And that I will do with all my heart. Even as I remain a student myself in the school of the spirit. But my call for you ladies and gentlemen. Is that you must assume the position of a student. Not a member. A student. A student. A student. A student whilst you are sitting down your children both physical and in the, in the realm of the spirit are saying thank you thank you for your endurance some of you out of these teachings you will have your own churches you will have your own congregations it will be it will be a bad thing to know that you came out of here and you become a disaster somewhere because of inaccuracies imbalance no some of you may need to shut down on many things and just sit down and learn and learn let those run in run. They will run and still come back. You stay. But when you do learn, you will run with the speed of Elijah. And that in one year, you will do things that your life will become an unending wonder. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with. Let me walk on the
see when we ask you to invite people to church this is not for fame or increased membership some of you as you are seated here there are people you are wishing were hearing what you are hearing because you are saying this is the answer this is it no wonder the psalmist will say i was glad when they said to me let us go to the house of the lord whether it's a miracle service or any other service that you know in your spirit that it will be impossible for me to come and share the grace and go back that I will come and live wiser. I will come and live stronger. I will be provoked unto godliness. Laying hold of eternal life. That your life will become a description of excellence. It says, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. We are going to pray. If you can pair yourselves into two or pair yourselves into three, we are going to pray. The next five minutes is a serious time of prayer. Please, no carelessness, focus on Jesus, minimize moving up and down, and let's pray. Because I want to speak and release some graces upon your life. I'd like you to pray, whether you are seated, whether you are standing, whether you are lying on the floor. I just want you to take some time and pray in the Spirit in one minute. Go ahead and pray. Shades kabala kata paranda gele kusiata rada bada gede beleketos. Those who are watching online, make sure you are connecting. If you are alone, pray. Jesus is there. This is a destiny-defining moment. Kate prakate beleketa praska varatos. E prakata pareska pelento shala varatos yata. Shadas kate fresca de berenta ke prast. Ombra kata para kata fras kata belaketes, kebrenda kata belaketos, lika para sabaranda bare kata lekaso zediata, krapa kata brete keberetu siates. Pray, it's a new season for you. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Someone pray. It does not matter that you are coming from that lowly estate. The hand of his majesty lifting you by his spirit, revealing you. You are an effulgence of the glory of the Lord. That through your life, people will learn God afresh. Through your life, they will see the excellency of the power and of the wisdom of the spirit. Hate praska da beleka to sofra de gebash Ranta parasa praska bereska da leko shadis Ekratika berena vegata soto proto segatesh In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus we are still praying Father what area of revelation in my life is deficient open my eyes to see it go ahead and pray what area is it my finances is it that I do not understand the dynamics of excelling in my spiritual life? Is it that I do not understand the wisdom of living and exerting dominion over the cosmos? Open my eyes, O God, that I may behold wondrous things. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The principles that make for character the principles in the name of Jesus, the engracing that brings total freedom and liberty over curses, over yokes, over diabolic manifestations. Reveal, reveal by your spirit. Reveal by your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point you are going to pray before I speak over your life. You know the area of needs that you have. 
that you know when God steps in and it is sorted, it will truly give you the time to sort the king. Some of you maybe is housing. Some of you maybe is sorting out certain material things. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. It says, he that told you have not asked for anything. It says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I want you to open your mouth and unashamedly ask God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Lord, sort this area of my life that I will have the liberty to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Your marriage, your finances, your children, your basic needs, your family, cry unto the God of heaven. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Shabras katabela katoska prande gebaru sesieta ekra teka tebe katoska tebe lakosh rest round about in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. A businessman is praying in the name of Jesus. A career person is praying. Someone is need who is in need for employment of employment is praying. A man of God is praying. A prophet in the making, an apostle in the making. Pray from the depth of your heart. Let the maker of men make your life, sort your life, bring you rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your needs are met, I assure you that you will have the time to serve His Majesty. A lifetime is too long to have your needs met. A lifetime was designed to serve the King, not serve things, not look for things. Looking for things for the rest of your life is an erroneous use of destiny. Hallelujah. What you are about to receive is the engracing that now makes the things that you have learned. It says, now that ye know these things, if all I do is to leave you at the point of just discussions and knowledge, then I did not do you much. For every time God speaks, there is an engracing. The assignment of that grace is to rest upon you and to cause the things that you have heard to give you the impetus, the propelling force to move in obedience and to partner with your obedience to make manifest the things that you have believed. That is the assignment of the anointing. The assignment of the grace of God that follows his word is to back to propel you, number one, to obey. And then in obeying, to partner with your obedience now to make manifest the things that you have believed. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh Listen, as I speak over you, I want you to shake away that lie that the devil has told you you will never rise. I want you to shake away that demonic belief. Just because you came from the village, shake away that demonic belief. Apostle, I've lived a wayward life, I've lived a scattered life. Do not worry. In his presence, there is room for restoration. But I want to pray for you. I want you to receive from the depth of your heart. I stretch my hands towards you. And I decree and declare 
I call upon the God who helps men, the one who helps men to rise, the one who helps men to thrive. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to command strange results from tonight. Begin to command strange results from tonight. Strange results from tonight. Extraordinary results from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your passion for the things of God. Your passion for the things of the Spirit. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Now hear me. I want you to receive this prayer. I want to pray for you. There are many of you, I'm saying it prophetically. Between now and December, you will stand here to dedicate your own home. I say it by the God who sent me in the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of you, as it is now, you may not even have work to do. But you see, God is ever willing to make his power manifest. I say it again, by his favor, may God start sorting your personal needs. Please hear me. For some of you, while I described the human body, I perhaps call systems that are physically failing in your own body. While it was an analogy to explain the kingdom systems for victory, for some of you, you were just wondering and saying, Apostle is just calling this thing. Anything that has entered your body and has vowed to cut short your life, I command it must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your systems, out of your organs, now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak over your finances. If you don't need it, you can receive it for someone else. But I want to pray over your finances. There is an advantage we have in addition to our value, our wisdom, relationships, there is the grace of God that engenders favor. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. I like how the Bible puts it. It says, and God is able to make all grace, not some grace, all grace are bound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency. Sufficiency means the capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. In all things, it says, may abound to every good work. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, for someone here, regardless the financial mountains that stand before you, I call upon my God who is also your God. Let things begin to change supernaturally. Open financial doors. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I decree and declare, whatever makes resources to go out of your hands, whether it's the careless use of them or a demonic manipulation, whatever be the case, I decree and declare, the grace to retain resources, receive it now. Are you ready for favor? I will pray this one today. I will pray it at the miracle service next week. I will continue to pray it till you become a living expression of the favor of God. Let me pray it for you. What is in favor? Huh. Favor has the ability to accelerate your life and your destiny. Favor has the supernatural ability to bring to end seasons of hardship seasons of all kinds of things most people have not understood 
the also passing excellency of carrying the genuine grace for favor and I have told you the proof of favor is not money money is the least thing you can be given as a result of favor the proof of favor is when God connects you to the hearts of men that you call on one man and a nation is ready to respond to you and even to attend to your needs I don't know who that person is but I'm stretching my hands towards you that grace I lay my hands on my own head and I pray by the privilege of the election of grace may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you rest upon you rest upon you this grace called favor let it rest upon you let it rest upon you in the city in the country let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ that you become a living evidence of what God can do with men in the name of Jesus Christ and by this impartation of favor I call forth whoever has been mandated by God to participate in your rising. Whether you know them or not, I declare this week by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may they show up in your life. May they show up in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Final prayer whatever has refused to move forward you have moved it by your energy you have moved it intellectually you have outsourced men to move it but it has refused to move i stand by the 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 advantage of the prophetic i move you forward i move you forward make constructive progress in the name of jesus christ For in Jesus name we pray you have believed it your eyes will see it your hands will handle it I say it again your eyes will see it and your hands will handle it in Jesus name we pray hallelujah let me make the altar call thank you very much I want to make the altar call right now there's no need cajoling you the foundation for all victories and dominion in the kingdom is Jesus for every time we gather there is always someone who needs to make it right with Jesus let's minimize distraction for the sake of those who the Lord is calling now you are in this place and whilst you heard me teach for various reasons the Lord began to speak to you for some to rededicate your life and make it right with Jesus for others to make that decision the first time whether you are inside or outside please let's minimize movement let's not make it a culture to just move out carelessly like that it's not a good practice I'll talk about that next week um, I know that there's a crowd of people but as much as possible it doesn't take more than two three minutes you are here you need to make it right with Jesus I want to give you an opportunity don't wait for someone to be the first just for one person who needs to run here I count one to five run to Jesus come and stand here come boldly come come God bless you koinonia let's celebrate them as they come come he will give you a new beginning he will rewrite your story come to Jesus keep clapping as they come thank you thank you for saying no to Satan thank you for saying no to failure thank you for saying no to yesterday and embracing a new life the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away if you're joining them please join quickly 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 come hallelujah let me tell you something my dear people standing in front here you may never understand the joy that is in the heart of the Father, even Jesus, when we come to declare his lordship over our lives. It is the noblest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. And I salute you for the boldness and the courage to make it right here in front. If you're joining them, please come. I'm about to lead them to pray. Rush, come. Join them very quickly. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says that everyone who comes to him, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you again for coming. And those who are following across the globe, here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. It's my joy and my honor to midwife that process as you encounter the living Christ himself. Lift your right hand, make it high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this after me. Let it be loud, let it be clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones you have brought by your spirit even to yourself. They have declared your lordship over their lives and I pray, oh God, thanking you for honoring their decisions. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, the life of God is at work in your spirit from this moment. And I declare unto you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go forward ever and backward never. And every accusation and every legal access Satan has over your life, by the blood it is broken. It comes to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you. Now please, I want you to move to my right which will be your left. There's a counselor who will have a quick word with you and then you return to your seat. Let's honor them as they make their way to meet the counselors. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord.